Hi, Tom Clendon here, your SBR online lecturer. And today I want to talk to you about the accounting implications of COVID. The accounting implications of there being a worldwide pandemic, because let's face it, that is 2020. That has happened. And it is a current issue for accountants. And therefore, in some way, shape or form, this will be tested in the SBR exams going forward. Now, in talking about COVID, in talking about this pandemic, I know it's affected all of us in individual ways. Some of our health, our family, our ability to see our friends, our ability to earn money. And I hope you're safe and I hope you're well. And I hope you appreciate that I'm talking about this purely from an exam perspective, from an accounting perspective. Now, the first thing to say is that COVID is not an asset. It's not a liability. It's not an element. It's not a transaction that we debit and credit. But it does affect financial statements. And I think if you were doing AAA, if you were doing audit, you would be immediately concerned about the going concern, depending on the business model. You know, if you're running a concert hall or you're running an airline or you're, you're running a cruise ship, you've got to think very carefully about the going concern of those types of organisations. But that's not a judgment that I think we'll be called upon to make in SBR. Because in SBR, we're accountants, we're not the auditors. But in passing, if the business is not a going concern, then you can't use fair value. Because if the business is not a going concern, fair value is inappropriate. Fair value is the amount you would expect to receive in an orderly transaction. Yeah, the amount you would expect to receive on the sale of an asset in an orderly transaction. If it's a pandemic, if it's not a going concern, if it's a liquidation, it's not an orderly sale. So fair values are inappropriate to use. Cost is inappropriate to use. The whole measurement basis of the balance sheet is different if going concern is out the way. So think about that a little bit. Integrated reporting. Integrated reporting is about the communication about the risks, about the opportunities that the business has. And so to me, it's clear that what management have got to do is to communicate to their stakeholders how the organization is coping, is pivoting, is reacting to COVID. And that communication is probably best done through an integrated report. So there's an aspect there. Make sure you're comfortable with integrated reporting. Government grants. ISA 20. A lot of governments throughout the world have given money to businesses to support them through this difficult period. And the money that they've given them would be in the form of a grant. Now, it may be a sort of a furlough scheme. It may be money for wages to so that the business can pay their staff. Money comes in, that would be for me, the revenue grant, debit cash, yeah, credit P&L, credit income straight away, either as a deduction from the expense or you could show it as other income. So there may be government support, in which case you have to think about ISA 20. There may be issues around assets being impaired, you know, if you own an aeroplane, if you own commercial property, then the existence of the COVID, the existence of the economic recession, the fact that shops are not open, is an indicator, is an external trigger for an impairment review. And so, therefore, you do need to know how to go around impairing an asset identifying a cash generating unit, calculating a recoverable amount. So impairment bubbles up within the COVID story. I think as does provisions, because 
if you're going to make people redundant or you're going to reorganize your business in response to COVID, then you've got to properly account for that under ISA 37, which means that if you're going to make a provision, there has to be a constructive obligation. There has to be a detailed announcement made before the year end that raises that valid expectation. And you can't go around making provisions for um, you know, ongoing costs. You can't make provisions for future operating losses. You can make provisions for redundancies. There has to be a probable outflow, has to be capable of reliable measure. But provisions is another sort of key area that seems to be obvious to build into and relate to in a COVID scenario. And maybe part of that reorganization might revolve around getting rid of certain historical PPE assets that you've had for some time. So hell for sale, IFRS 5 kicks in. Because if as a business, because of COVID, you are going to sell your hotel chain, you're going to sell certain assets, then you've got to consider whether that they, they should be accounted for, whether they qualify for being held for sale. Is there a commitment? Is there an active plan? Are they in a suitable condition for immediate sale? Are you offering it at a reasonable price? And is it highly probable that this is going to be sold within 12 months? Because only if all of those conditions are met, does it classify, does it meet the criteria of being held for sale? They're quite rigorous, they're quite high. And if they do, of course, then we're looking at a current asset presentation because we're primarily going to recover only from selling the asset. We cease to depreciate the, uh, the PPE. Yeah, and, and you're giving relevant information. You're giving predictive information by showing it as a current asset. Deferred tax. Deferred tax has implications also. Uh, COVID has implications of the way we account for deferred tax. Now I'm thinking here of losses. I'm thinking here of losses that are being carried forward, trading losses. And trading losses that you carry forward are a deductible temporary difference that create a deferred tax asset. One more time. If you've got an accounting loss, yeah, that you're carrying forward, it's a deductible temporary difference and it creates a deferred tax asset. Link those words together. Losses that are deductible create a deferred tax asset. Just like gains which are taxable create a deferred tax liability. Gains, taxable liability. Losses deductible asset. Right. Losses carried forward create a deferred tax asset. But it's only an asset if you've got access to economic benefits, if, 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 if it's going to give you, if you can recover it. And so what I say 12 says is, is it probable that you're going to make a profit in the future that you can then offset and recover these losses against? Because you can't carry forward the asset unless it's probable that there's going to be future profits. And now that we've had COVID, there's got to be a reappraisal as to whether next year there are, in fact, going to be sufficient profits or in the near future, sufficient taxable profits to offset those losses that you're carrying forward. It's a judgment. It's a review process. You've got to open your eyes. That in a particular situation that we find ourselves in, that COVID has so many impacts on impairment, on provisions, on deferred tax, on government grants, to name but a few. I mean, I think it I think it also has an impact on pensions. You know, I say 19, defined benefit pension schemes. Because what we look to do in ISA 19 is we look to measure our, our pension fund liabilities. We've guaranteed to pay those pensions in the future. 
And because that that liability is in the future, that deficit is in the future, we're measuring that at the present value of the future cash flow. So what's that got to do with COVID? Well, you could argue the liability potentially gets a bit smaller because people are dying. And if they die earlier, then we don't have an obligation to pay them a pension. You can argue that. I think that's slightly in bad taste. But I was thinking more along the lines that the liability potentially gets a bit bigger because interest rates are so low. The governments in the world have reacted to COVID by lowering interest rates. And if interest rates are lower, then the discounting factor is less sharp when you are doing the present value calculation. So, you know, 100 million in 10 years time, if you discount it by 8%, 10%, you know, comes comes a lot smaller. But if you're only discounting it by 1%, it actually is a bigger number. So it affects how we recognize our pension fund deficit. It's all over the place. Now, look, my final takeaway, my final thought about COVID is to talk a little bit about alternative performance measures alternative performance measures. And this is a topic that, that, that is in the SBR syllabus. It was introduced. It wasn't in P2. It wasn't in the old syllabus. And alternative performance measures, I suppose the most famous is EBITDA, earnings before interest, tax, depreciation and amortization. And I, I suppose I, I sort of like the idea of alternative performance measures because what businesses are trying to do is to make a voluntary disclosure, to make an additional disclosure, to make a, a disclosure that is personalized to their business, tailored to their business, so that a user has a, a better insight into how it works. Because how many clicks they have on their website, you know, could be a KPI. Uh, the, the airlines, yeah, the capacity, the fact that uh, 85% of EasyJet flights are, you know, there's an 85% capacity. That's a, something which is very simple and measurable and key to their performance, key to their individual business model. I slightly worry sometimes about alternative performance measures because they haven't got the rigor of IFRS. They haven't got the comparability because one, because you make up your own alternative performance measure. So you can't compare them company to company. I mean, they lack the rigor. So it's really, 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 really important that they are disclosed and, and, and they are explained and they're not misleading. So what's this got to do with COVID? I've come across EBITDAC. EBITDAC. Earnings before interest, depreciation, amortization, and coronavirus. So somebody is trying to measure the profit, measure the performance, ignoring the car crash that has occurred in the PL because of coronavirus. Because of coronavirus, there are additional costs. Because of coronavirus, revenues have fallen. Because of coronavirus, there are losses. So let's measure, let's have a performance measure as if coronavirus didn't exist. EBIT that. What do you think about that? I know what I think about it. I think it's rubbish. I don't think it's a faithful representation as what has happened. Because coronavirus has happened. How dare you measure profit before coronavirus? How dare you put your head in the sand? Naive, not useful, not even predictive because I don't think coronavirus is going to go away. It's not like it's a one year blip and then suddenly everything's going to be fine. It's not, it's not, that's not the current feeling. So I don't think that's very subjective. So listen, what I want to do is I want to thank you for listening. Yeah, um, you know, uh, I appreciate uh, you're taking the time and I hope uh, this uh, has been useful for you. And uh, if it has, 
please tell your friends if it has please subscribe if it has yeah i'm very pleased thank you very much for listening